Thank you. Good. Can you guys hear? I'm going to kind of stay right up here and uh, move around a little bit, maybe. Um, I'm from the opposite end of the Rishi's District than you guys are. I live in Pacifica, California, about nine miles south of San Francisco. I first met Rishi, I think, five years ago at the uh, five or six at one of the national Democratic presidential events in uh, San Francisco. And I had seen him two weeks earlier somewhere. I'm like, who is this guy? This guy's all over. And uh, there was a bunch of Sanders was there. Uh, all the presidential candidates were there walking around. And I kept running into Rishi at different events, et cetera. And um, one thing you'll learn is that Rishi is a tireless guy. He just never, ever gives up for any reason. He works the science. He works the data. Um, this is a guy that can win where no one else could. And his chances of winning have never been better than this year. He, I believe I was approached by at least five of his opponents trying to get an endorsement there. And they all kind of laid out their plan. And I'm, I kind of went through and they're like, well, there was eight competitors total. I believe three of them spent over $400,000 total. And uh, they went through and they're, they said, oh, how are you? This is how I'm going to win. This is how I'm going to do this. And I just said, well, how are you going to be Rishi Kumar? And they all just kind of <laughs> looked at the ground. And it's kind of like they're not going to outwork him. You know, there's a, there's a maximum effect you can get by outspending him. And he's got, like, the infrastructure. He's got a core group of folks that support him. He's got a core group of voters. Forty percent of the people voted for him two years ago. So he's got a he's got a base and he's got a real good position to move forward and win here. Um, Rishi's a principal guy, you know. If you don't talk to politicians a lot, maybe you you don't know. But when you ask them to do something, a lot of times they look at the ground and they're like, "Yeah, that's a that's a sensitive subject. You know, we can't go there or whatever." Um, Rishi's real good about saying, "Well, there's got to be a solution. You know, nothing's unsolvable. Let's." Let's work the science. Let's work the data. You know, how how come this hasn't been solved yet? What's the problem? And um, there's not a lot of sacred cows in his campaign. There's not a lot of things he's not willing to look at. Um, he's willing to call in people that know know the science, know the data, know the history of the district. And uh, quite frankly, um, I don't think I had a Congress can congressional candidate knock on my door for 20 years before Rishi knocked on my door again. I'm like, oh, I already know who you are. I met you like three years ago or whatever. So it was, uh, it worked out well. Um, anyway, we'll move forward and I'll induce the next folks, but thank you for coming. Um, it's a unique opportunity. Uh, where I live has never been the, the Rishi's opponent's district has very little local knowledge of who the congressional candidates are. There's a lot of opportunity to uh, swing undecided voters. There's no incumbent vote there historically. Um, with that, I'd like to say thank you again for coming, and I'd like to introduce uh, Marilyn, Lieb Marilyn Libros, the former vice mayor of Morgan Hill. Marilyn. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You can all hear me, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't think R Rishi ever heard that you don't give a politician the microphone. <laughs> but I'll make it quick. <laughs> I've known him for many years now. We work together on what's called the League of California Cities, which encompasses our whole state. And he walked up to me. I was vice president at the time. He walked up to me and said, hi, what can I do? And I said, this is the man we need. And I have followed his career. He's the man you need. He needs your vote. Be sure and vote. I personally was on city council in Morgan Hill for eight years, termed out, and was off for four years. And now I'm actually campaigning, too. So to get my seat back, I've been laughing, saying, the gentleman that has it has been keeping it warm for me. So <laughs> I'm ready to go, and I hope to be in aligned with Rishi on many projects because we think a lot, he's amazing, he's intelligent, and I can't say enough about how much I support him. 
So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. I'm so happy to see so many smiling faces. And anybody wants to get to know me, please do. I do want to just tell you a short, sweet little note is I was actually in Saratoga as a child. I went to Fruitvale Elementary, which is now a middle school, I think. And I remember I had, uh, uh, I was here first, second, and third, and I then we moved out of the area. But it was a wonderful community back then. I took baton lessons at the old high school when I was little. So if there's anybody that lived here that long time ago, talk to me, because I'd love to remember old Saratoga. Oh, OK, I'm going to have to talk to you, sir. All right, thank you so much. And like again, I can't tell you enough. This is the man we want yes. to win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Marilyn, and, and good luck in your race, too. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to invite up uh, Liang Feng Chao, the uh, vice mayor of Cupertino. Thank you. Yeah, it's my honor to be here to support Rishi, and he has uh, being the person that's fighting against special interest. And uh, I happen to, I, I'm running for re-election this year too. And on my yard sign, I have residents before special interest. Because your city council um, is likely the closest government that can represent the residents. But that's what Rishi has done for Saratoga fights against the water company and then against uh, any any that there therefore he has been getting attacked when my friends told me Rishi is getting attacked again I said that's good then voters would know who to vote for because they are helping him advertise his name <laughs> the more he get attacked the more votes he will get so and when I first ran in 2016 for school board, and my campaign slogan at the time was, vote for the change, vote for the future. And uh, Rishi is a person who gets things done. And when he gets on something, he never stops. And we need that, we need him in the Congress. So vote for the change, vote for Rishi. Thank you, Leanne. Good luck on your race, too. Uh, next, I'd like to do uh, Ahmed Walia, the CEO of Informatica. Ahmed. Well, Rishi, what can I say? I think, uh, first of all, uh, I agree with some of the sentiments echoed before. I think I'm waiting for, as uh, Rishi, you said, Rishi Yadav, three months later for a victory party here. And I, and, I, and I genuinely don't think that anything should stop us. All great sentiments that I've known Rishi, I've been a Saratoga resident for 15, 16 years. I've lost track of time. And I can tell you that the amount of groundwork, working with the people, empathy that I've seen with Rishi, energy that I've seen with Rishi, and I think, uh, as, as you said, not taking no for an answer, we kind of take it for granted, but I've seen him do that. And over the course of time, and I think that is not only earned the friendship, but it deepened the relationship. And I can tell you on behalf of a lot of Saratoga residents that I know, I think we're all rooting for him. And I think as I can see, a lot of you have come from neighboring cities, I think we're all rooting for him. I think we need change. For Christ's sake, we need somebody young, somebody who can think differently. We're in a country which has to define change. And I think we should all be proud to send somebody who's an agent of change from probably the most thriving innovation zip code of the damn world. Yes. So I'm looking forward, Rishi, for you to not only win, but by win by a thumping margin, so we can all have margaritas here in Rishi's back. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just not running for office with that speech. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, next I'd like to do is uh, Shander Paterbiram, the uh, uh, Chief Marketing Ex Officer of uh, Coupa Software. Next, Sharon Pite, the founder and CEO of Cardiac Cloud AI. We're <laughs> Thank you, Dan. So I, I have known Rishi 
How are you doing, by the way? Good afternoon? Good, Good weather? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I've known Rishi for a long time. And, you know, when I look at who is the right person for any kind of a office or a job, there's three things usually I look at. One is, one, does he have the right attitude, right ethics, right morals, right scruples? Second, does he have the ability to comprehend the issues? And can he actually analyze to see what the solutions are? Three, can he actually execute on those and make a difference? And all three of those, I know Rishi is very, very capable and competent of doing it. A few anecdotes, I mean, just to give you an idea. I have known Rishi far before he became the council member or in his running for Congress. And I've seen him, how we have worked together in actually changing the community. In fact, you know, he was the one that drove me to hold sessions with students in Saratoga about startups. And what kind of thing do we need to, what kind of skill do we give the students here and the future kids that are going to take America to the next stage. And you know, that's a quick, small anecdote. But there's several things that we've done together even before. So the, just the general service-oriented disposition that she has, the sense of community and how he's going to take the community to the next stage is very deep rooted in Rishi. And we want somebody for us who thinks of not for himself, but about the whole community and the country. And Rishi has a skill set. Second, I mean, as a case in point, if you look at the the water problem we had. I mean, San Jose Water was exploiting us, raising the prices without giving us a valid reason. Just because you spend more, you can't just raise the rates. All of us have a budget. There's a way to execute under the budget. And Rishi was there, fought for it. In fact, he educated me on the whole problem. I remember sending an email out and where we won the war against San Jose Water. So that's just an example of what he can do for us. Third, as one of our friends here, Amit, just said, we want somebody that is there that's going to make a change, a difference, and can execute. If you look at what we have in the office now, we have had for 30 years, you know there's a saying that says, you do the same thing, you can't expect a different result. So for 30 years, we've been doing the same thing, sending somebody to the office, that is not bringing change. But Rishi, on the other hand, is meant to change. And I'm looking forward to us bringing Rishi to the office and making things happen. Again, Rishi, I'm looking forward to a party, a big party in a bigger place too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, very much for, uh, point is very well taken. Rishi really does have the skill set here to hit the ground running in a very unique way. Um, there's not a lot of people that know the science, the history, the math, have the infrastructure and know the actual strategy to win. And it, it, it's down to uh, a ground game and getting the money it takes to push this over the finish line. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael Stogner of San Mateo County News. He almost looks like he's here to arrest one of us, but I'm not sure it's not true. I might just do that. Uh, Hopefully it's not me. <laughs> oh, it won't. It won't. Uh, my name is Michael Stockner, and I am originally from San Mateo County. I lived there for 66 years. Seven, six years ago, I moved down to Monterey County. I have, I'm not, I'm leaving my mask on. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll speak up. Um, and I still operate a news media site in San Mateo County called San Mateo County News .com. Uh, I've recently, I'm probably the newest person who has met Rishi. And uh, Dan suggested I meet him. And I said, why? I don't like politicians. I work as a private victim's advocate for the last 22 years. Most of the cases I work on are very serious and uh, they're not pleasant to discuss. But I said, I'll be happy to meet with him. I said, who's he running against? And he said, he's running against Anna Eshoo. I said, that's a no-brainer. I personally know Anna Eshoo is dishonest. I attended a hearing that San Mateo County, um, actually the congressional hearing, uh, back in 2004. And I brought a question to her attention regarding my sheriff at the time. And I said, I don't trust what he's about ready to say to you. So she asked, I gave her a question. She asked him the question. He lied under oath. I then raised my arms to her to ask him again. She did. And then she just let it go. So I sent her a text mail, you know, an email. I said, are you gonna follow up on the sheriff of San Mateo County committing perjury in, in the hearing? And no response. And then in San Mateo County, uh, I personally asked for the sheriff and under sheriff to resign because they were caught in an underage 
sting operation of sex traffic slaves, and Anna Eshoo did nothing. I brought one or two items to Rishi's attention, and within one day, he responds. And I told him, I said, I've never met any politician that not only listens to what I say, but actually then responded. <laughs> I said, so it'll be my pleasure to endorse you. So I told him you might not want my endorsement because the political people in San Mateo County don't like me. And I said, I, I don't care whether they do or not. I'm more interested in somebody that gets something done. That's all I'm interested in. I don't like politics. Uh, I do like Rishi, and I have encouraged everybody in San Mateo County to vote for him. I will continue to do that so that San Mateo County at least can bring in that extra votes for him. So, and Rishi, I, I give this book to you if you, uh, if you want to have it. This is actually the hearing testimony of that hearing I just mentioned. And so then if you wish to give it back, you may. But um, I just find politicians have no problem lying to reporters. They have no problem lying to the public because there's no way to audit them. That's, that's my shortest answer. So um, congratulations, and I hope this goes very well. Appreciate you. Thank you, Michael. And the uh, one of the under sheriffs he mentioned is the gentleman that was uh, recently caught up in the uh, the Batmobile caper there that you may have seen on TV. And I believe he has just been voted out of office in the last 60 days. So uh, the last guy I'm going to introduce before Rishi is a, a gentleman who uh, who I met today, but I've heard his name many times, and uh, usually it involves some sort of strategic um, offering or some strategic idea and. and Rishi's had some stuff come by. I'm like, that's not going to work. People have tried that. That doesn't work. That's a bad use of your money. Why would you do that if you lose this demographic to do it? And uh, three or four times I said, that's a great idea. I've never seen anyone do that. Who, who told you to do that? Who came up with that idea? And each of those three times he said Stan Bogosian, the, the former mayor of uh, Saratoga. Here. So I, I don't know him very well, but I know he's got a lot of good ideas. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rishi Kumar, for standing and running for office. We really appreciate it. Let's give him a hand. Whoa. Just caught myself. I'm a Republican. What am I doing at a Democratic function? <laughs> well, I am here because I think for the same reasons that everybody else is here. And that is, we have a candidate that can think on his feet, bring innovation to Washington, D.C., and most importantly, follow through and get it done. This is so important. You know, I didn't know uh, Rishi Kumar a number of years ago. I saw the name, you know, and who is this guy? Well, I uh, looked at my inbox one day, and. And I guess I must have gotten on an email list or something, and I, I got a letter, a list of things that um, are going on in Saratoga. I've been very active in the scene here in Saratoga, and I thought, this is fantastic. There's something that this guy is telling us, all these different events and different things that we need to know, what we need to do about crime in our town, so on. I said to myself, why isn't the city giving us this information. I thought, this is fantastic. Well, it turns out in the intervening years, the city has done a, you know, what I consider to be a half-baked attempt to, to uh, come up with this information. But here's the guy that came out and got it available to us. And that's the kind of person I want representing me in Washington, D.C. Somebody that is responsible, follows through, and I know several people have mentioned earlier that uh, he's been very active on water, cost of water. Um, and I went to a hearing in, in San Jose, the PUC, and realized that uh, these guys just rubber stamp whatever the, um, the utility comes and asks for, unless people come up and show up and say, no, wait, this is unacceptable, and here's why. And I, I really appreciated that. I saw Rishi there, he was doing his thing, and that's 
you know, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, I feel sometimes very frustrated with the influence that big pharma, especially, and uh, big corporations have on our, um, on our lifestyle. And as I say, I come from a Republican background. I've sat and, and um, you know, hung out with a cattle ranchers in eastern Washington, uh, you know, probably one of the most conservative places on the face of the earth. But I said, we really need to get a handle on how our lives are being affected by this kind of influence in Congress. Uh, it is, it is very sad that my neighbor up there uh, just last year, a uh, cattle rancher, had uh, lost his, actually his grandson, to a, an overdose of opioids. And we can trace a line, connect the dots, thanks to Rishi, help us connect the dots, back to these companies that are marketing this stuff and horribly affecting our children. This young man was 28 years old. His father found him in, his, in the house, in front of the TV in the farmhouse. It was tragic. So I think we finally got somebody that can do something for us people. And it's my great pleasure to introduce our next congressman, Rishi Kumar. So, you know, that's the reason why we are actually running, because uh, I wish Anna Eshoo had done something about these types of OPI deaths, and I haven't quite seen that. And uh, we can obviously do better. We can obviously do better. But uh, I do want to thank each of you for joining us today. And uh, Stan Bogosian, former mayor, who I respect uh, quite a bit, for his impact upon Saratoga and Silicon Valley. And, uh, and Dan uh, Stegging, it's great to team up with him. And uh, you know he basically reached out. We started connecting. Uh, he looked like a long lost brother. And, uh, and uh, he has some incredible ideas constantly challenging me sometimes, coaching me, guiding me. So we have been very fortunate that we have uh, friends like Stan and Dan and so many others, and all of you, each of you who have joined in today. Uh, Ray Frost sitting right here. Where did I meet him first? I knocked on his door. <laughs> I've knocked on like tons and tons of doors and made lots of good friends. And whenever, whenever they invite me inside, I go up and eat all that good food. Look at me, you know, bloating up. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's uh, the most exciting part of my day has been actually knocking on doors. But when you look at uh, this journey, this journey, it's been an incredible journey. And uh, it's been a journey with my beautiful wife, Seema. She's back, she was really tensed and, you know, she was actually uh, giving my son orders and he was getting a little agitated. <laughs> but, but that's been the nature of uh, doing something for the community. You know, we are out there trying to do a little bit. And uh, the thing is, she never says no, and she does things with a smile. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's teaming, teaming and winning. If you go to my website, you can do a search for uh, Rishi and Seema Tango. And it's about, it's about our journey in terms of how we have collaborated. You know, she works at Juniper Network. She's a doubly from Columbia University. So, you know, she, she married an idiot probably, but, you know, it's, uh, it's good because she's there, the voice of reason. And our boys, they got engaged very early. They got started early. Sometimes they didn't want to, but uh, they, they got involved with the community as well. It's been a family. Even now they are helping out with different programs and coding and all that kind of stuff, you know, so they are also quite involved. But, you know, when you look at this journey, it started as uh, arriving at the Philadelphia Inter International Airport with two suitcases and to a graduate school program at the University of Connecticut, you know, mechanical engineering. And uh, I'd never done anything. I'm, I'm like a total geek. I'd never done anything in my life related remotely to the world of politics. I'd never done that. And, uh, you know, but what I did was, as an activist, I started jumping in to solve problems. And that led me to challenge uh, our favorite utility company, <laughs> that San Jose Water Company. 
And we rolled out a mobile app, you know, very innovative approaches. We rolled out a mobile app, which is called Silicon Valley Water, to make the protest to San Jose Water Company a lot easier. And uh, when I started this, sometimes you don't know. My wife tells me, you're a glutton for punishment. What are you doing? And we engage and take on challenges. You know, William Shatner said this, uh, going somewhere where no one has gone before. And that's what we have done with San Jose Water Company. We have rejected nine of their water rates so far. They, they are waiting me to exit the world of politics. It ain't happening, though. <laughs> and, and then we look at the crime and burglaries. When I started doing it, I was like, people told me, Rishi will drop the real estate price of Saratoga. But I'm not at the beck and call of special interest groups. I'm here for people. I'm here for all of you. I'm here to champion these types of issues and address these types of challenges. That's the reason why we are running. And that is exactly the reason why we are challenging none other than an issue. We respect her 44 years of political service, 44 years. That's a long, long time. It started in 1978. And uh, you know what I'm really tired of is that I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, you know, a great fighter. But unfortunately, there are no results to show, no results. And that's really why the reason why we challenged Anna issue. When you look at the opioid deaths that Stan referenced, a million people have died over the last 20 years, and Anna issue could have done something about it, but she hasn't because she has unfortunately cozied up to pharma. So this is the reason why we are challenging an issue. It's 2022. It's time to close the chapter on 1992 when she got elected. It's time to close it now. It's time to close it. You know, when you look, some of the challenges we have, when we are knocking on doors, people are telling us we need, we need fresh blood. We need fresh blood. People are sick and tired of politicians who stay there for a long, long time, do very little, and, uh, and sell out. You know, that's not the game I would ever play. People are telling me we need fresh blood when I'm knocking on doors. And I cringe the day I'll meet uh, Count Dracula. <laughs> it might happen, who knows? But it's time to close the chapter on 1992. It's time for a tech savvy leader. You compare Anna issue and myself, we have done more face-to-face -face town hall meetings more face-to-face -face town hall meetings that Anna Eshu has done in 30 years. And we were actually impacted by the pandemic. Can you believe that? It's a staggering st statistic. It's a very staggering number. Like, how come I've done more town hall meetings face-to-face -face like these compared to Anna Eshu? Now, when you look at, I'll give you, and these are very simple statistical data, right? You go to YouTube and you search for Anna Eshu town hall meeting. How many will you find? My town hall meetings are there on YouTube. We have more town hall meetings on YouTube compared to what Anna Eshu has put on YouTube over the last 30 years. How does she do it? It's basically, you remember the AT&T conference calls we used to have? You know, that's the type of uh, town hall meeting she still has. Is that a way to collaborate? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, my approach is to get out there and apply technology to engage with people, which is what I've done in the city of Saratoga. It's extremely, extremely important to me. I need to hear it from the people, and that's the reason why we do what we do. It's going to change. It's going to change. It's time to close the chapter on 1992, because we need tech-savvy leaders. But we also need ethics in politics, which is our run. NSU has accept, accepted $4 million from pharma and healthcare industry. She has accept, accepted $400,000 from lobbyists, also from like gun systems manufacturers, also from fossil fuel companies. This is a travesty playing on. How will a politician be there serving the interests of the people when they are at the beck and call of all these amazing lobbyists that are dominating Washington? That's not the game I would ever play. You know, my run is about integrity. It's about integrity. And uh, that's the reason why we're running. And it's time to close the chapter on 1992 because we're going to win. We're going to win. And why? Why are we going to win? Because of what you heard, the polling data. She's down to 35%. Now, let me, let me walk you through this, right? So uh, Rishi Adhanam I'm talking with his, one of his buddies, and he said, you've got to be very systematic with how you explain. So I'm going to be extremely systematic. In nine, 2018, when, she was, uh, when I was not running, she would do about 72% of the votes in a general election, 72%. Similar number in the primary election, too. You have to remember that she typically carries the percentage from the primary to the general election. It always repeats. 
which is like magic, but it's data, it's data. Data is telling a story, right? So she would end up with 72%. When I first ran in 2020, we dropped her to about 62%. She dropped because we, we took some votes. She dropped. In the primary election of uh, 2022, which just happened on June 7, 2022, we dropped her to 48%, 48%. And now remember what I just said, that the percentage ends up repeating in the general election. With two people running, what's the, what's the outcome? What's it gonna be? What's the outcome? But you know, here, she keeps dropping because when we did the polling, we told people like she's gonna be likely between 40 and 45. But she dropped to 35, which is like, we were jubilant when we got that polling. One of the lines we used with the polling company was, you know, don't try to stroke our ego, we don't need that. We want the data, we want the facts on this one. The fact is, she's down to 35% now. Fact is. So we are on track to win this game, win this battle. Win this battle that we haven't added for four years. It's been a painful journey at times because they have attacked us. And uh, we are quite happy when Anna Eshu is attacking us now because we feel we are vindicated. You know, we put on this amazing campaign and now she's on track. Why is she attacking us? It's seemingly she never recognized that somebody was running against her ever. Suddenly she's recognized that. She woke up suddenly because she's seen the polling data herself. She's run the polling too. So when you look at my plan, my agenda, you know, Anna Eshu has to pass the torch. We can't wait anymore. Time is now. Time is now. And you look at my priorities in Congress. There are three simple priorities. We need to address the challenges of our times that have been sitting in the back burner for a long, long time. For a long time. What are these challenges? Women's rights, that's number one. We look at climate. Climate is also a huge challenge that we have. We have challenges with housing, traffic, homelessness. We need to find solutions. How many of you have been stuck in traffic, waiting, waiting? I moved here to Silicon Valley in 2000 from Michigan with my wife and, uh, and uh, we haven't seen anything. We still have the light rail which nobody uses. It's a travesty. Transportation is broke and there's no plan. There's no, really no plan. And uh, you know, Anna Eshu talks about the electrification of Caltrains. Many countries across the world did that in the 1900s. Come on, give me a break here. Give me a break, we can do better. And that's my agenda to fix some of the burning challenges of the last few decades. You want a hyperloop? Hyperloop, yes. <laughs> we need to think, we need to innovate with these types of ideas. We need to come up with a new plan, a new vision. We have written lots of policy papers on our website about high-speed transportation to if we can connect mountain house to mountain view in 20 minutes. Now we have created boatloads of housing and we can hopefully fix the traffic challenges if we have real high-speed transportation. So those are ideas we have. And this is what we look, priority number one. Number two, we need some tech savvy leaders. We need to grow the economy. We need to grow the economy because right now billionaires are leaving, companies are leaving, and uh, you know, they are, the venture capital uh, folks are going to Miami, and the tech innovators are going to Austin. And we can't afford that because we do not want to be like the Detroit in the 80s. We need, need to stem the tide. We need to bring it back together, and that's my agenda. As a high-tech guy working in the software industry, working for companies like IBM, Cisco, my intention is to grow the economy and bridge the income inequality gap, create opportunities for education. I was part of the California Department of Education computer science Curri curriculum program, and every child, every public school child between K to 12 will be studying elements of computer science. That's the type of education we need to have. But really, we haven't seen a plan. And finally, we are going to clean up Washington because it's completely broken there. It's completely broken. Insider trading. How, does that bother all of us when we see that? The rules that apply to them don't apply to us or vice versa, right? That's crazy. I mean, how can you look a blind eye to congressional insider trading? We need term limits. We need term limits. We need to purge the dark, tainted money that is polluting American politics. Out, and it starts from Washington. Starts from Washington. That's the reason why we have pledged to never take the dark tainted money that Anna Issue takes boatloads off, because we take only money from people. So I, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. In my first two years, we will accomplish a lot more than what Issue has done in the last 30 years. That I guarantee you. That I absolutely will guarantee you. The first two years, we will do a lot more than what Issue has done in the last 30 years. But I need your help. 
I need your help. And uh, there are three forms of help. I'll be very simple, straightforward. It's very simple. It's ask Anna Eshu to pass the torch. That's first and foremost. <laughs> ask her to pass the torch. Why are politicians in this country holding on to a political seat but not doing anything for decades? It's time to pass that torch, Anna. It's time to pass it. Take a lawn sign home if you can. We have plenty of lawn signs here. Pick one up. You know, you can see them. We have uh, out there at the check-in table. Please take a lawn sign back home, display it, give it to some friends. And if you can canvas, we need help with canvassing. We have done 200,000 doors so far. 200,000 doors so far, and we are at it with a passion. You can see many of our interns are here. Lots of young high school and college students. Back in 2020, we had 1,000 students that came from 29 states across the country because they could see the integrity that we were seeking to bring to Washington. We have empowered the youth. Many of them will run for president, for congressman, for senator someday because they can truly see the, the, the vision in terms of what, how they can impact the changes upon the world. So take a lawn sign. Please help us with canvassing. And finally, this is the most important thing. Anna Eshu has outraised us because of all the dark tainted money. So we need the money. We need the money. And if you have contributed, uh, please consider making a contribution again. $5,800 is the campaign contribution limit for a couple and $2,900 per person. Please consider maxing out and helping us out. I really appreciate it. Let's go win it. Let's go win this. Let's win it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I truly really appreciate that. Great to have you. We'll do some Q&A. But before we do that, I would love to bring everything together and take a lawn sign picture. Shall we do that? Let's bring some lawn signs from the back and let's everybody stand right here. We'll all huddle right here, right around me, and we'll take a picture from there. And it, this picture will be on social media. So if you are if you're wanted by the FBI, then don't show up. <laughs> okay, everybody, let's 